What's up, beautiful people? Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Pullman Strike of 1894. Now, usually when you think about a strike, you probably think about a conflict between workers, usually in a union, versus the management of a particular company. Remember, throughout the Gilded Age, labor and management battled over wages and working conditions with workers organizing local and national unions and or directly confronting business leaders. The Pullman Strike of 1894 was a nationwide railroad strike between the American Railway Union versus the Pullman Company other railroad companies, and the federal government. This big showdown between labor and management took place in Pullman, Illinois, a small town 12 miles outside of Chicago. Pullman was a model company town built by the Pullman Palace Car Company, a company that built sleeping cars for the railroads. Pullman cars were super luxurious railway cars that allowed people that could afford it to travel in comfort across the country. Hashtag 19th century baller life. The Pullman Palace Car Company had a unique setup. In Pullman, the company owned the land, the homes workers lived in, and all of the businesses. The point of this setup was largely to ensure a dependable and productive workforce for the company. If workers lived where they work, the company could increase efficiency, regulate worker behavior, and try to prevent any labor protests. The bottom line is, the point of a company town was to maximize the profits. At Pullman, thousands of workers and their families lived in houses rented from the Pullman Company. And the company town did provide pretty decent housing, schools, a local theater, and other amenities. But the rents were high and there were rules in place that restricted behavior. For example, alcohol was forbidden and the company had people who kept an eye on workers' behavior to report any potential problems to the company. Now something important happened in the country in 1893. Cause there'll be hard times. Following the Panic of 1893, the economy took a dump, leading to companies going bankrupt, bank failures, and massive layoffs. In response, the Pullman Company laid off thousands of workers and cut wages for the rest of the workers by 25% or more. However, in spite of these cuts, the rents in Pullman were not reduced and workers were not allowed to move to more affordable housing outside of the town. If you tried to leave the company town, you would be fired. Now you will probably never be able to guess what's about to go down next. Workers attempted to negotiate with owner George Pullman for better wages, shorter work days, and better living conditions, but his response was basically this. Nope. He refused to negotiate with the workers. On May 11th, 1894, Pullman workers walked off the job, starting the Pullman Railroad strike. Now this strike was a wildcat strike or rather an unannounced strike without the official approval of the union leadership. But in order to increase the support for the cause, the workers called on the American Railway Union, ARU, led by Eugene Debs for additional support. And the ARU became involved in the events in Pullman. Initially, the head of the ARU, Eugene Debs, was worried about striking during an economic depression and called for a postponement of the strike, but the workers of Pullman refused to back down and Debs threw the support of the American Railway Union behind the Pullman workers. To put pressure on the company, the American Railway Union in June of 1894 called for a nationwide boycott of Pullman railroad cars. The American Railway Union members refused to work on any train that had a Pullman car attached. And by June, rail traffic throughout much of the nation had come to a halt as over 100,000 workers joined in the boycott in support of the Pullman workers. Since trains were the primary way that goods were moved across the nation, this meant the Pullman strike became a national issue. During the strike, skirmishes and violence broke out between workers and local police and on occasion, property was destroyed. Which brings us back to this slide. Why do other railroad companies and the federal government get involved? Like most of the Gilded Age presidents, Grover Cleveland was not sympathetic to the cause of workers and got a federal judge to order an end to the strike because it was interfering with interstate commerce or trade between states. The Cleveland administration also claimed that the strike was disrupting the delivery of the U.S. mail and delivery of the mail was one of the duties of the federal government. And although workers did not target railway cars that carried the mail, 
They knew this would give the government an excuse to intervene. In the strike, mail distribution was impacted in strike-affected regions. The Attorney General, Richard Olney, a guy who had a close relationship with the railway industry, used this as justification for the first ever injunction to block a strike an injunction that he would get in early July of 1894. Adding to all this drama is the fact that the governor of Illinois refused to request that President Cleveland send in federal troops to stop the strike. In fact, he wrote the president informing him that reports of violence were exaggerated and warned that real violence would occur if soldiers were sent in or if the federal government intervened. Nevertheless, a federal injunction was issued against the strike. And basically what this means is the court ordered the workers to end the strike and to go back to work. Grover Cleveland is quoted as famously saying, if it takes the entire army and navy of the United States to deliver a postcard in Chicago, that card will be delivered. I bet you can guess what's about to go down next. As for the workers, most ignored the injunction. And in response, Grover Cleveland sent a few thousand troops to Illinois to enforce the injunction and to force the workers back on the job. In early July, violence erupted between protesters and federal troops. Clashes occurred between the workers and the troops. Rail cars were destroyed, and in the end, around 30 people were killed. Eventually, the federal troops and local police gained control over the railroad yards, and the strike was stopped. The union was disbanded, and many of the leaders, including Eugene Debs, were arrested and sentenced to jail for defying the federal injunction to stop the strike. The experience of the strike being broken up by the U.S. military and his arrest had a big impact on Eugene Debs. He would leave jail feeling like the capitalist system was unfair to workers and the only way to bring about meaningful progress was through radical change. And he went on to become a founder of the Socialist Party of the United States. Debs became very politically involved, running for president a few times, once even from jail where he received nearly a million votes. As for the rest of the workers, the Pullman Company only allowed workers back who resigned from the union and workers who refused were blacklisted, preventing them from working in the industry ever again. So finally, why is it important we know about the Pullman strike? The Pullman strike was the first time an injunction was issued by the federal government to break up a strike. So not only did workers face extremely difficult working conditions during the laissez-faire era of the Gilded Age, but also hostility from corporations, hostility from the federal government, and hostility from the courts. Hiring scabs, Pinkerton guards, blacklist also regularly occurred. And the last thing about the Pullman strike, and perhaps the most amazing. Remember, Mr. I'm gonna get the mail delivered no matter what it takes. Well, amid the crisis, President Cleveland and Congress created a new national holiday, Labor Day. So while he is sending out troops to get workers to go back to work, he signs into law a national holiday to celebrate the contributions of American labor. You know, things that we take for granted like the eight hour work day, safe working conditions, sick pay. You can't make this stuff up. Thank you so much for watching. If the video helped you out, click like, tell a friend about the channel, and most importantly, have a beautiful day. Peace.